What is up, everybody? It's me, Phil Porto, photographer, videographer, and educator. And today on the channel, we are going to talk about all the small things right after this. We keep it fresh like, we keep it cool like, we keep it fresh like, we keep it cool like, we keep it fresh. So, like I said, we're going to talk about all the small things. And I'm not talking about that amazing, super catchy, can't get out of your head song by Blink-182. What I'm going to be talking about is a lens that Fuji put out that is very, very small, but very, very powerful. And that is this guy right here, the Fuji 8mm. I really, really enjoy this lens, and I want to shout out the team at Fuji for sending it over to me so that I could test out this lens and see what I thought about it, because honestly, it was a really, really cool experience. It's not a lens that I would have kind of thought to go get or try out, but having the opportunity to try it out and see what it was like really brought in my horizons to this lens, so I'm, so I'm thankful that that got to happen. So first, let's address the obvious elephant in the room that I've seen a lot of people have questions on, the aperture. Yes, it is a 3.5 lowest aperture setting. However, for me, though I love lenses that typically have a lower aperture option, when it comes to this kind of lens, you're not really trying to eliminate things from the background. You're shooting this wide typically because you want to capture everything that is in the situation, everything that is in the scene that you are currently capturing. That's why a lens like an 8mm is used. So for me, it really wasn't an issue that it's a 3.5 aperture and not a 1.8 or a 2.8 or a 1.4. This actually works perfectly for me. When you're trying to capture the scene that you would use an 8mm for, whether it's architecture or whether it's street photography or whether it's just being artsy, this aperture length actually kind of works perfectly. So for me, one of the main things I noticed straight out the bat when I unbox this lens is that I love the quality and the build of this lens. If you followed me at all, you've known that I've talked about how Fuji has really upped their standards when it comes to the build quality of their lenses and how I love the 18 and I love the 33 and I really hate having to go to a lens that doesn't feel as strong, doesn't feel as well built. And so having this eight millimeter was kind of like just hanging out with the little brother of of the 18 and 33 when it came to the build quality. So like I said, if you watch my videos, you know that I've fallen in love with their new build quality, and this is no different. This is a great, great lens, feels great in the hands, super, super lightweight, and does its job. Another thing that I really, really liked about this lens is that the autofocus was spot on. When it's something so wide, you never really know if a lens is going to be able to capture exactly what it is you're trying to tell it to focus on, but this lens lens did not have a problem at all. It was quick, it was sharp, it was clear. I loved the images and the video quality that I got from using this lens. And one thing I was super, super surprised about is how close you can actually get to your subject that you're trying to shoot with this lens. It's something that Fuji has really, really improved on in this new uh, batch of lenses that they've released is the image quality up close and being able to autofocus up close is super, super important impressive and this was like the others super impressive at how close it could get so for me the main concern and maybe for you as well is that this is not a super common focal length like what would you really use an eight millimeter lens for and that's what i really want to spend a majority of this video talking about is what this lens could be used for so the first thing I thought of when I first started using this lens is how much I wish that I had this lens a few summers ago when me and my wife and my son went overseas and we spent about a month overseas. Because when we were there, this lens would have been perfect. Because sometimes when you're taking a photo, it's more so about capturing everything than it is about having perfect lines or avoiding any kind of distortion. And that trip was exactly that kind of scenario. I would have loved to have this lens to to capture all the architecture and all the actual livelihood that I was seeing around the places that we were going when we were in Rome, when we were in Venice, when we're going through the castles at Edinburgh. Or when I'm walking the streets of Venice or going through the waters in Venice, this lens would have been perfect. I would have been able to actually capture everything that was around me, which is what was wowing me. It wasn't certain things that were leaving me in awe. It was actually everything around me. So having this lens to switch to would have been a beautiful, beautiful addition to that trip. Second. I have wanted a lens that was close to fisheye, but didn't get the extreme distortion of fisheye. And this lens is actually exactly what that is. 
When shooting music videos or super artsy photos of artists, I wanted something that added a little bit of character that didn't leave the photo or the video perfect, but it left it with a little bit of a distortion look and a little bit of imperfections to make it give off the exact vibe that I had in my mind. And so when I got this lens, I knew that I had to do that for some reels that I was creating for my friends in Wavehaven. Yeah, I'm a flex, I'm a flex, I'm a flex, dog. You ain't even gotta run when I'm the catch, dog. Yeah, I'm a flex, I'm a flex, I'm a flex, dog. You ain't even gotta tell me twice, I'm the one, dog. And it honestly was the perfect fit for this that kind of situation. We were able to create some really cool artsy reels, and like I thought, the distortion was actually an addition to what we were doing. They loved the look, they loved how it added a little bit of weirdness and grittiness to the content, and that's exactly what I was looking for. Number three, if you've been following me for some time, you may have seen that I did a video where it was talking about how I capture all my dance floor footage at a wedding or an event with the Leowa 9mm lens, which is an autofocus lens. And so when I was able to borrow this lens, I was like, wait a minute, let me see what this lens is like and compare the two. And after using this at a few weddings, though I love the Leo 1 9mm and all the images that I've got from it, I would love, love, love to replace it with the 8mm Fuji lens. It has a way better build quality than the Leo 1 9mm lens. The Leo 1 9mm lens is really, really tiny. And though that's cool, sometimes it kind of feels like a toy and feels like it could break over time, as opposed to this 8mm, which I talked about, has a great build quality and it's very similar to the lens. I'm already using on a wedding day or at an event so switching from those lens would not feel very awkward sometimes the nine millimeter when I put it on the camera body it does feel very different and it takes a little bit of time to get used to but it's not the end of the world but this eight millimeter feels a lot better in my hand it also feels a lot more durable if something was to happen and someone was to bump into me or anything like that at one of those events I feel like this lens would be able to take the brunt of that a lot better than the Leowa and I also love that it's it's weather sealed because sometimes my events are outside and if it starts to drizzle or something like that I don't want to have to like leave the dance floor obviously I don't want to have to leave the event and figure out another lens if I have this one on then I'm taken care of and I'm good but if you're paying attention I did say I would love to replace the Leowa with this Fuji 8 millimeter and there's a reason I said I would love to and that's because I'm not going to and the reason is, I already own the Leo with 9mm. Like, I've already paid for that lens. It's already something that has already been a business expense. And though the 8mm is better, I'm not really using that lens so much that I need a replacement. It's more of a specialty lens than it is a necessary lens. And for that reason, I really can't justify the purchase. I'm at a point in my career and a point in my family life where I'm not just buying gear because I want to. I buy gear if I have to. I use what I have and I make the best of what I'm already using because I can do a great job with it. So back in the day, it used to be, oh man, this lens intrigues me. This lens is amazing. I'm going to drop the money on it. But now it's do I... I need this. Do I need to spend the money on this lens? And having a wife and two mouths to feed in my little boys is more important to me than getting the cool new lens that I really, really enjoy. So I'm buying out of need and not out of want these days. So at $799 for the 8mm, it's not just an easy, no big deal kind of purchase. It's something that you really, really need to invest in. But I do want to say, if I did not already own the Leowa 9mm and the Fuji 10-24, to this lens would be a no-brainer for me to buy. But since I already have those two lenses, it's already a focal length that I have covered. And though I would enjoy this one more, like I said, and though I enjoy the photo quality just a little bit more than I do the others, it's not really worth it just to have that autofocus or just to be able to have a lens that feels a little bit better in my hands. So if you do not have a lens at this focal length, then I would say, yes, pick this lens up. It is a great, great lens. However, for me, I can't justify it based off of the fact that I already have two lenses that are really good in this kind of camp. So to sum it up, 
this is a great, great lens. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed borrowing it. And if things were a little bit differently right now and I was doing a little more that this lens would get a lot more use for, I would pick it up. But right now, I'm going to have to get ready to send this back to Fuji. It'll hurt my heart a little bit, but I think I'll be able to move on. But if you don't have anything like that, I do suggest you at least rent it and see how great of a little lens this is. So until next time, God bless.